Sí, muy buenas tardes. Bienvenidos al primer webinar de GR Academic, dirigido a colegios y estudiantes de bachillerato. Hoy es el primero de varios seminarios que estamos preparando para ustedes, de la mano de instituciones y profesionales internacionales, para brindarles la mayor cantidad de información de interés y apoyarlos a tomar las mejores decisiones para su futuro. Para quien no nos conoce, GR Academic es una empresa de asesoría educativa que ha ayudado a más de 1.500 estudiantes de América Latina a estudiar idiomas, pregrados, posgrados, en reconocidas instituciones a nivel mundial. Este año cumplimos 20 años y para celebrarlo hemos decidido crear el GR Club, formando una red de colegios a los que hemos seleccionado para hacerles llegar información de la mano de los más expertos. Durante todo el 2020 estaremos dando orientación a nuestros estudiantes y colegios de forma gratuita en temas de interés para ustedes y claves para el éxito estudiantil. En el Academic, durante la cuarentena, le hemos dedicado mucho esfuerzo y mucho tiempo a estudiar qué cambios están impactando a nuestros estudiantes para poder buscar soluciones. Han sido meses muy difíciles para ustedes, para su familia, para los colegios, los profesores. Nuestro compromiso es apoyarlos. Cuentan con nosotros para analizar opciones. Muchas de estas opciones ya las tenemos adelantadas. Y por mencionar algunas de las propuestas, les comento que actualmente hay mayores alternativas de becas y descuentos, hay pasantías a distancia, hay opciones para comenzar a estudiar de forma online y luego presencialmente, de esa forma no perderán tiempo. Una próxima invitación también que estaremos haciendo, hablaremos de esta opción. Los estudiantes que están en el último año de bachillerato no tienen que perder tiempo, pueden comenzar sus estudios de forma online, por ejemplo, un semestre o un año de forma online, obtener créditos de una re reconocida universidad internacional y luego comenzar presencialmente una vez que termine todo este tema de, de la pandemia, la situación actual del coronavirus. Entonces, sí están a tiempo para que no pierdan tiempo. Muchos estudiantes no conocían esta opción. Pronto les estaremos pasando la información de ese seminario y otros seminarios con información que les será muy útil. Les recomiendo que cuando reciban este tipo de información, tómense unos minutos, léanlas, porque realmente estaremos brindando información que les será de mucho interés para todos ustedes. Bueno, en Hatra Academic sabemos que cada caso es único. Cada uno de ustedes tiene diferentes intereses tiene diferentes posibilidades. Por lo tanto, les recomiendo que no dejen de buscar ayuda personalizada. Mi nombre es Ana Cecilia García, soy una de las directoras de GR Academic y para mí será un placer asesorar personalmente a cada uno de los estudiantes del GRQ. La mejor forma de contactarme es a través de Instagram de GR Academic, arroba GR Academic, o incluso me pueden contactar por mi Instagram personal, arroba Ana Cecilia García. Para comenzar, me gustaría contarles un poco sobre lo que ha pasado durante estos últimos meses. Durante estos meses de cuarentena, una de las preguntas que nosotros en Geo Academic nos hicimos y hemos querido buscar respuestas es sobre el tipo de perfiles que las empresas están contratando. ¿Qué habilidades requieren estos empleos? ¿Cómo los estudiantes deben prepararse para estas nuevas áreas que demanda el mundo actual? Entonces, hoy queremos compartir con ustedes una parte del resultado de estas investigaciones y es por esto que la clase de hoy es sobre las carreras STEM y el diseño de videojuegos y oportunidades en el mundo laboral. Esta clase será impartida por Joshua Sain en inglés. Él es el director del programa Global de University of Utah, el programa global para estudiantes internacionales. Y ahora los dejo con... Joshua, listo. Hi Joshua, are you there? Yes, I'm here, how are you? Hey, great, I'm fine, thanks, how are you? Doing really well, thanks so much for having me. I'm so thrilled to be with you today, and, and uh, looks like we've got a great crowd, and, and so excited. So let me know when, when you're ready for me to go. Yes, I think we're ready, you can start now. Great, well, fantastic, and, and thank you so much for having me. Uh, as said before, my name is Joshua Sine. I'm the managing director at the University of Utah for Utah Global. And um, Utah is located in Salt Lake City, beautiful location, fun place to study. 
I'm not here to talk specifically about Utah though. I will incorporate throughout our discussion some information about Utah, just so uh, we can help to understand STEM a little bit better together. And that's what I'm here to talk about today uh, is this concept of STEM. And so for those of you who are, are on the call and have heard of STEM, um, it is a acronym, meaning that it's a combination of four areas of emphasis that students can study while at university. Even while in high school, we, we cover many of these topics. And as you can see behind me here, it is uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And when we hear those terms used together, typically we think, well, that sounds boring. Uh, I apologize for all of you math lovers out there, but what I can tell you is that our world runs on STEM. Truth be told, we learn more about our world on a yearly basis from uh, experts in these areas. And we also grow as uh, a world together as we see excel uh, folks excelling in these areas. But when I talk about STEM with students or with uh, teachers, I, I try to bring to them some functional realities of what science, technology, and engineering, and mathematics really is. And um, what you'll notice behind me is the screen will continue to change. I try to make this a, as interactive as possible, so I don't have any PowerPoint slides. All of the images will be located directly behind me. And so STEM, um, STEM, equals outcomes. And so typically when a student comes to college or goes to a university, they are going for a particular reason. Uh, we think about student athletes, maybe they're going to play sports and find an outcome playing professional athletics. We think about uh, students who go to medical school, they come to the university to become a doctor and expect a certain outcome of working in medicine. That's the same world as, as uh, STEM. These, these programs and so when you come to university, I like to focus on what those outcomes will be and then we'll talk a lot about particularly what you'll be studying in some areas of interest to you. But you can see a whole host of different majors, uh, I'm sorry, professions behind me. Um, everything from a veterinarian up in that corner to an architect directly behind me, all the way to a uh, computer scientist or a um, Let's see, what else do I see? Statistician, STEM encompasses so much, but particularly in our world where we continue to see evolution in areas of technology, artificial intelligence, um, we're looking for opportunities in which our students can understand the value of STEM moving forward. Um, You'll see behind me a couple, of, uh, a couple of slides that talk about why STEM particularly. We jump to that next slide, Everton. And um, you'll see a whole host of different reasons as to why people choose STEM degrees. Um, you can stay there. STEM, oh, sorry. sorry. We'll go back to that last slide real quick. Sorry, that one right there, yep. Um, STEM is focused on building what I like to call a practical skill set. Um, and you think about a college degree, there's a whole host of different areas that you can focus in. There's areas in the humanities, there's the social sciences, there's business, um, then, then there's our area of STEM. And there's more than, than just those. But what most of our students are studying STEM are interested in are those career outcomes. And many of those careers are focused in on um, evolving world processes, evolving daily life. Uh, we think about the value of, of science in, um, in modern society. Science can, can be sort of encapsulated in any particular way. But what we find most interesting for our students in STEM is a career earnings opportunity that helps to paint a picture. And so you'll see a couple of graphs here behind me. The one up top is for um, STEM graduates, right? So the question is, do STEM graduates earn more than non-STEM graduates? 
And so I thought this was important to note directly into our early conversation because a lot of times uh, we want to pursue our passions and that's critical. We definitely want to make sure we're studying what we're passionate about. But that passion has to intersect with um, the ability to you know, provide for you and possibly your family. And one of the areas we've seen great success for our graduates is in these areas of STEM. Now that doesn't mean that if you graduate with a degree in humanities that this is what you're going to earn. But what that means is that this is the average income out, coming out of college. And you can see we're looking at roughly $32,000 to start with for a non-STEM degree. And so this is all in, in US dollars. So 32,000 US dollars right out of college. That's your first job in comparison to a STEM degree where you're looking at $50,000 to start. Um, additionally, it's important to realize job security and the longevity of your skill set. We think about students who are, who are earning degrees in the, in the technology world, which is constantly evolving. And so those skills are constantly evolving and they become more valuable as we go through um, you know, each evolution of technology. And so you think about people working from home now, it's, uh, it's very, uh, it can be very challenging, but one of the areas where we've seen continued job growth is in software development, computer, uh, computer science, um, computer programming, many of these areas of technology that can be done um, from home that would fall underneath your STEM study. And so you can see mid-range career for STEM degree, oh, sorry, wrong way, you're looking at roughly $80,000. That's mid-career, maybe five to seven years into your career, where in a comparison with our colleagues who are, are not in a STEM degree, you're looking at about 46,000 US dollars. And so as you're evaluating programs, what you wanna take into consideration is where the world is going. And the world is going less to um, programs within the humanities, and they're focusing more on actual technical skill sets. But what's exciting is to learn that all of these things come into an undergraduate degree in the US. So studying in the United States, you're gonna start with what we call a general education anyway. And that general education will be um, focusing on a broad range of topics and give you the opportunity to study a whole host of different things. And ultimately, that gives you a chance as a, as the student to, to dive more specifically into things and learn more about your passions and specializations. And that's one thing that I think we're going to talk a little bit about today is the reality of what a STEM degree does. And um, I want to start off talking about uh, research. At the University of Utah and at many institutions in the United States, research and institutions around the world, research is a major component of what institutions do and what universities do. And at the University of Utah, we are no different. But I want to talk to you a little bit about engineering. Um, engineering is, is focused on uh, creating and, and making things um, making things happen. When you think of the word engineer, a lot of people don't know what exactly to categorize that as. And so I want to give you a few examples of what, of what engineers do. So you'll notice behind me a gentleman seated to, uh, to my left here, a man named Gregory Clark. He's a faculty member at the University of Utah. He's a biomechanical medical engineering faculty member here at the University of Utah. And his focus in, in research over the last two or three years has been on what you see right in front of me, this, this um, prototype of a robotic prosthetic. So Dr. Clark, one night was watching Star Wars, which I'm sure many of you can understand and, and enjoy. And uh, you'll, you'll remember the scene in, uh, I think it's The Empire Strikes Back, Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader in an epic lightsaber battle. The next thing you know, uh, Luke Skywalker's hand gets sliced off and he comes back with a robotic prosthetic. And back in the 1980s when the movie was made, that was nothing but um, the future. And what, what's exciting is Dr. Clark determined that the future is here. And so he spent the last two to five years as an engineering faculty member 
developing the Luke arm. And so this is a robotic prosthetic that is mind and muscle controlled and allows for the similar functionality as a real hand. And you can see over here to my, uh, my right, Kevin actually wearing that arm. Kevin is a friend of Dr. Clark's who lost his arm in an uh, engineering accident 17 years ago. And so he now has the use of a robotic prosthetic that allows him to have the same functionality that he used to before the loss of his arm. And so that's some of the things that engineers are doing on a daily basis. And we kind of have a, we have a film of this in action that I want to show you this one right here. You'll notice behind me, the use of the technology, this is research in action. So as an undergraduate student at universities, you'll have the opportunity in STEM to get involved in research projects like this. You can see the functionality of the hand is very similar to what you would see um, with a, a typical hand. And it's exciting that this is the kind of action that's taking place uh, at, at universities everywhere. Oh, watch out there, almost got me. And um, so as an engineer, those are things that you can help to focus on. Those are things that you'll be able to uh, learn and, and, and evolve. These are real world problems. And so when you're studying in school and you're thinking about STEM, these are solving real world problems. These are practical skills that are gonna help you evolve into the next stage of your life. So Dr. Clark received a lot of academic recognition. He, the University of Utah received a lot of prestige from his research, but what's most important to him and what he said is as an engineer, he's literally changing the world. And that's what's most important to him. What's exciting about being involved in a STEM program in the US is um, many students who come to travel and study in the US, they wanna work here after graduation. And so the US awards what's called optional um, practical training. And this optional practical training allows for um, non-citizens to work in the US without uh, sponsorship required. So it's work authorization. And for students who are studying in anything but STEM, they get one year of work authorization where they can go and, uh, and work for an employer in the US. But for folks who study with Dr. Clark and, and get a STEM degree, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, they earn what's, what's known as STEM OPT, which is three years of work authorization in the United States. Meaning that as an international student and then an international professional, you don't need sponsorship from your employer for three years. You can work, you can earn, uh, earn money, earn a living, stay in the US, and ultimately get three years of work experience that then you can earn sponsorship from. And so STEM students really benefit, and why? Why do they benefit from that? Because technology, engineering, these are skills that are needed in every nook and cranny in the world. These are things that students are getting um, and taking into the workforce to work for companies like these. These are many of the employers that we have here at the University of Utah. And it's a practical skill set that students are, are, are learning. And I'll give you just one more example of an electrical engineering faculty here at the University of Utah. This is Dr. Rajesh. He has um, spent the last several years creating this technology right here. And this may not look all that important to you, but this is real world practical engineering development and technology. This is what's called a lensless camera. So this camera doesn't need a lens. And when I talk to a lot of folks, they say, well, that, why is that important? How does that make any sense? And what I want you to think about are driverless vehicles, okay? And I know those two, a, a, a lensless camera and a driverless vehicle, how do those come together? Well, what this technology does is it solves the real world problem of a vehicle needing to have spatial recognition and needing to be able to see. This camera can use any lens, any transparent material as its lens. You'll notice just this pane of glass right here. That's all that is. So think about this in a car. It's, it's hooked to a car and it's using a headlight or it's using the windshield or it's using a bumper, any transparent material as its lens so that it can determine where people are and what's in its way. So it can understand its spatial recognition to be able to drive without a driver. And this is solving a real world problem once again. So as an engineer, 
what you get to do on a daily basis, depending on which area you go into, and there's several areas of engineering, uh, whether that's electrical, mechanical, civil, um, industrial, and, and many, many more, biomechanical, biomedical, you get to create, you get to solve problems. If as a kid you played with Legos and you love putting together things, or as a, a teenager, you love to solve problems and you love to ask questions and find out the why, engineering is a fantastic place for you because that's exactly what you get to do is you get to determine why things work the way they work. So I took my seven-year-old or my nine-year-old son um, to a water park, right? So there's lots of big water slides and, and really cool, fun things. And he's like, who designs these, dad? And you know who designs them? Engineers. And at this particular water park, there was a tube and those tubes went from the ground to the top of the slide through a, a robotic mechanical um, like escalator or elevator. And so every intricacy of bringing that slide all the way from the ground to the top was designed by engineers. And so engineering doesn't mean you're just working behind a desk plotting and drawing. It means you're actually getting to do some pretty exciting and fun things. And I'll share an example of that. At the University of Utah, we are recognized for our video game design program. And uh, typically when I bring this up, there's a lot of interest from our student population because believe it or not, video games are something that students are doing a lot of right now. Uh, when they're not studying digitally, they're playing and living in virtual realities. And at the University of Utah, we have the number one ranked video game design program in the world. And uh, it is also happens to be an engineering degree. What's exciting about this program in particular is as you think about engineering, engineering has evolved to be something more along the lines of technology related. And what this degree happens to be is computer science backed. So for students who are interested in video games, um, when I sit down with a parent or, and a student to talk about this, typically the parent is shaking their head and the student is nodding their head because that passion and that connection for video games. But what's exciting for parents to understand is that this is a computer science degree. We place 97% of our graduates in jobs. Right now, the video game industry is $140 billion in revenue every single year. That makes it the most valuable er uh, area of, of the entertainment industry of any. So more than television, more than movies, more than music, video games is projected now to grow twice that in the next five to seven years. And when we think about video games, we talk about video game design, video games are no longer the teenage student down in their basement drinking Mountain Dew and playing League of Legends until two or three in the morning. Video games have created an environment that's inclusive for all. For example, at the University of Utah, we have a top 25 ranked medical school. And that medical school um, has students who need to train in, in emergency situations. And so students from our video game design program have gone, in, no, you can leave it here, have gone into uh, develop a virtual reality for our medical students to train on uh, emergency situations. And so they are building out more than just uh, the greatest video games. Now they're doing that too. And what's exciting about programs in computer science and programs in um, say video game design in particular is these, these focuses are now being led by industry professionals. And what that means is your teacher, your faculty member in your video game design program here at the University of Utah actually works in video games in their day job. They just happen to teach alongside. So for our students, the practical skills that they're learning on a daily basis are what are happening, happening in the technology industry on a daily basis. So you don't need to wait until next year's textbook comes out to be able to stay up with the times. Your faculty member is bringing that industry experience from their professional job into their faculty job and teaching you that on a daily basis. And so these programs are committed on helping emerging industries. So video games is an established but still emerging industry 
where there's lots and lots of job opportunities. For example, in the city of Salt Lake right now, there's over 7,500 jobs available for computer scientists, software developers, video game designers, you name it. And if we show that slide of all of the companies that our students work for, you'll see some companies that you recognize. So Apple, many of our students who will graduate from the University of Utah will go on to work at companies like Apple. They'll work at companies like Adobe and Facebook over there in the corner. They'll work for companies like ESPN, the, the US Air Force. And not all of them are designing video games, but many of them are using the skills that they learn in computer science and technology to get some fantastic jobs to where the 97% job placement is an average starting salary of 84,000 US dollars out of a video game design program. That means that our students who graduate pursuing their passion are also developing very highly employable skills. And what's exciting for the University of Utah and for many STEM programs, the university in particular is as a top 100 school in the US, we can go out to employers and we can ask them what kind of skills they want from their employees. And what they tell us particularly in STEM is that we want students who have the technical skill set for sure, but we also want students who have differentiated themselves um, through learning soft skills. And so when you think about STEM, a lot of times you're thinking about the hard maths. So in order to graduate from computer science, you're gonna need up to calculus two and linear, uh, linear algebra, but you're gonna be able to gain other skills outside of that hard technical skill set where you're learning to problem solve, you're learning to think critically, you're learning to work across teams, across cultures, some of those skills and soft, soft skills that aren't technical, like in a textbook, like you're learning in math, which are formula, formulaic based, but they're, um, they're a soft skill, meaning that they evolve and, and they're things that are able to meet pressure and, and take on timelines and, and some of those areas where our students are, are excelling from our, our practical programs. And so you'll notice behind me here, some, here's a video, and of course it's University of Utah related, so bear with me, but this is the kind of stuff our students are doing in the classroom. Once you get into the program at the University of Utah, you are working practically to develop video games on a daily basis. Everything you learn is to help you pursue your passion and to earn that skill set. But we want you to graduate with more than just a, re a resume and more than just a degree. We want you to graduate with a portfolio so that when you're going out into the workforce, not only are you able to differentiate yourself because of your STEM degree, but you're able to differentiate yourself because of the exciting things that you've been able to publish while you're a student at the University of Utah. And so for video game design and for many areas of STEM, this is what our students have, um, have to look forward to. And STEM goes across the gamut. It, it runs all the way into every area of industry right now and outcomes for students. And so you'll notice programs at the University of Utah and many universities that this is our biz school of business. It's very much focused on um, evolving business leaders. But we also have a STEM designated program. So what this means is you can come study business at the University of Utah, get a foundation in maybe running your family's business or, or starting out on Wall Street or whatever, whatever that dream of yours might be, but you can still earn a STEM degree while doing that. And that STEM degree at the University of Utah is what, what's called information systems. So this is the intersection of business and technology, where these two come together so that you, as a graduate from the University of Utah with a degree in information systems, can use technology, data, computer, um, programming, software development, that same skill set in helping businesses make their business decisions. Because what our employers have told us is that we have a lot of students who graduate with a data science degree, in STEM, but they don't know anything about business. And we have a lot of business students who graduate with a business degree, but they don't know anything about data science. And so what this program does is merge two interests for a lot of our students and two interests for a lot of businesses in bringing a business-minded data scientist together. 
so that you can use technology and you can use the latest in data science to pull information that's going to help your business make business decisions and be able to accomplish you know, business goals. And so what employers are looking for now is that specific skill set. So in your mind, if you're thinking, well, I just like computer science, but you know, I've always been interested in my, my cousin's business or my family's business. You can take those two interests and combine them together. STEM does not mean boring. That's just, that's just the, the truth of it. STEM is, like I said, really what our um, economies are built off of, built off of hard work and ingenuity, but also built off of innovation, solving problems, making the world easier to access and, and making uh, it accessible for everybody. One last program that I'll talk about, um, and not a lot of people think about this as STEM, but is, is entrepreneurship. And at the University of Utah in many schools, um, there's a program for entrepreneurship. And what's exciting about this program in particular at the University of Utah is the focus is through a program in Lasan Studios. So if you jump to Lasan, just a picture of Lasan Studios. So Lasan Studios is a center for entrepreneurship um, and and What's exciting about entrepreneurship is entrepreneurship gives budding students the opportunity to start their own careers, to start their own companies, and to take some of those technical skills that you're learning in engineering or that you're learning in biology or that you're taking through um, technical writing and bring that to a center for entrepreneurship where we've helped to launch over 760 student-run companies since 2006, and that's second in the U.S. to only MIT. And if we were to go into Lasan Studios, what you'll see, if we go into Lasan Studios, what you'll see is a maker, uh, a maker space, a place where our students have the opportunity to start their own companies. You'll notice office space up here in the corner. That's for you as a student to start building out your dream and living what you want. Um, the, the motto for this place is dream big and change the world. And we really believe that because we believe that students, no matter what your discipline, can change the world. We have students who are studying uh, computer science or who are studying medicine who have stepped into Lasan Studios and created companies that are now changing the world and are changing the way people think about it. And so what this Center for Entrepreneurship allows you to do as a STEM student, doesn't matter what discipline you're from, you can come and start your own company. And when you think about it, that makes a lot of sense because some of the world's finest entrepreneurs didn't study business. You think about Mark Zuckerberg at Facebook, he was a computer science major. Or you think about um, uh, Steve Jobs at Apple, he actually studied philosophy. But for our students at the University of Utah, you and at many other schools and many STEM programs, they'll have an opportunity for you to entrepreneurship your degree. So that as an undergraduate, you're gaining some very valuable skills to help propel you into the next phase of your life. And we do that sort of on a daily basis here. I wanna share one story about a student to give you an idea. So this is a computer science major at the University of Utah. His name is, is William, okay? So he is studying STEM. Um, he is in computer science, very exciting, top 25 program here at the University of Utah. But he also, is living life and so he's learning these very technical skills in his engineering computer science degree around programming and coding um, software design user interface all of those things that when you look at an app you we may not realize what goes into developing that but th those are all computer scientists and engineers building out that interface so think about instagram right instagram wasn't just designed by a photographer, Instagram was designed by computer scientists, by folks who had a background in programming. And you look at some of the most exciting companies in the world, and that's what they're built off of. Go to any website, go to any um, you know, app. Those are built by computer scientists and programmers, coders, and William is one of those students. So William couldn't find a parking spot here at the University of Utah. What's great studying here is you, you don't necessarily need a car, but William had one. And so William decided that he, he was going to create an app that allowed people who owned homes around the university. Great. So yeah. this is the campus of the University of Utah, you can see behind me. You'll notice as we pick up and elevate, there's a lot of residential homes 
around campus. And yep, you can see them start to shape around those mountains there. Now, William couldn't find a parking spot at the university, but William, William couldn't find a parking spot, but he did see a lot of houses that had empty driveways because people were at work or they were doing something else. And so William decided that he would um, create an app that allowed folks to rent out their parking spots on demand. So similar to how you or I would hail an Uber or would get um, an Airbnb around the world, he started doing that with parking spaces. And so he used his computer science skill set, developed an application, started marketing it. And so now in Salt Lake City, you can rent out your parking space through an app called Park. And this is the kind of skill set you learn as in STEM. So if we jump back to the original slides around STEM, you'll see a whole host of different careers and opportunities for you as a student to pursue. Uh, what's exciting about these careers is that they're practical, they're world changers. The program that you'll study in will allow you to gain a wide variety of skills, but also a very technical skill set that's highly employable, highly desirable. If you look at things like medical scientists or, or veterinarians, a lot of students will go into medical school after they get a degree in biology, which is in, in the sciences. Students who go into mathematics may go on into aeronautical engineering or working for, for uh, companies like NASA. Students who go into chemistry, might go work for a chemical company in, in the local environment. And so when we think a lot about what STEM means, STEM is the foundational, um, foundational understanding that allows us to evolve and operate in a society. And there's a reason that these outcomes are what they are. It's because the world continues to change, it continues to evolve, but these skill sets are so valuable and so necessary that you'll continue to see opportunity arise in these areas of focus. And so as a high school student going to college or as an early college student, you'll begin to take courses. And those, those courses will help to guide you in a selection process that allows you to determine a couple of factors, right? Obviously, passion and interest has to be a part of that discussion. So what are you passionate about? What are you interested in? Uh, you know, another part of that discussion has to be job opportunities because we go to college. We don't just go there to just learn for fun or go to football games. We have all of those things, but that's, that's only a portion of your, you know, your educational experience. The outcome that you and your parents are looking for, uh, it's focused in on career. It's focused in on you providing for yourself and providing a better life for yourself. That's what all of our, our parents, guardians, that's what they want for us. And so ultimately, that's got a factor in as well, a job opportunity. And then I think the last thing that really you have to take into consideration is, is what you think you can accomplish. And in STEM, there's, there's nothing you can't accomplish. Um, so many different areas of focus, so many different areas of emphasis, so many career opportunities. And so here at the University of Utah, we have a very strong STEM program. Um, our students end up, uh, as I showed, working all over the world for many of the biggest companies. Um, and they're extremely and very highly employable. Yeah, uh, you can see many of the rankings behind uh, here at the University of Utah. I mentioned that we're a top 100 university. Our School of Engineering is actually ranked 61st in the US. We have a, a top 50 business school, as I showed. Um, we're focused and committed on bringing students those skill sets. And that's really what jobs come from, are from a skill set that's highly desirable, highly employable, and ultimately will help to carve a, a great future for you. And so as you're beginning to pursue and navigate the waters of education, definitely take into consideration STEM as an option. Um, because ultimately the outcomes that you see, the opportunities that are available to you, they're broad, they're, they're wide, and they give you a chance to uh, accomplish some really exciting things. So from here at the University of Utah, uh, we're, we're thrilled to be able to participate and share a little bit about the, the STEM world and what that means. I'm happy to answer any questions if I can, if, if that's helpful.
Okay. Hay una pregunta, Joshua, are you there? I'm here, yes. Okay. Let's allow Daniel Mishkin, he has a question. Great. Hi, Joshua. Uh, question here. Uh, so you've mentioned a lot of stuff about the, you know, the CS programs you have in the University of Utah. But I was just wondering, so what exactly makes University of Utah stand out in comparison to another good university with CS and game design? That's a great question, Daniel. I, I think, you know, as rankings come out, they look at a couple of different things. And so I'll share a couple of those factors and then I'll give you my biased opinion. Does that sound okay? So the, the factors that they really look at as they're determining rankings are, are um, career, career after, um, after college. And so uh, ultimately as well as innovations coming through that university and research. And so the university spends half a billion dollars in research um, and that research is really groundbreaking. The other differentiating factor at the University of Utah, particularly in computer science, we've had some very successful alumni, over 270,000 alumni at the university. Um, one of them uh, and, and many of them, so one of them happens to be a man named John Warnock. John Warnock is the co-founder of Adobe. So Adobe being you know, Photoshop, PDF, uh, the, the creative suite that, uh, that we all have value in as we're designing. Um, and that connection to Adobe has allowed uh, Dr. Warnock to donate a bunch of money back to the school. But more importantly than that, he's donated a bunch of practical um, labs and technology. So our students are using the same tech the same computer programs, the same software that they'll be using in the professional world on a daily basis. That's what they're trained on. And so our students have a step up in the sense that we also have deep connections with uh, employers in the area. Uh, Adobe has internships just for University of Utah students. And so by joining forces with the School of, of, of Computer Science and with some of our very successful alumni, we're able to prepare our students to face some of those challenges. And the last thing that I'll mention is the pr practical nature of our program. So there's not a lot of, of, of theory that isn't relevant. The discussions are very focused on learning by doing. It's a project-based environment where you're not just sitting back and listening to a lecture. You're actually engaging in learning and learning by doing. And that's sort of some of the differentiating factors that, that make our computer scientists um, so successful. And the last thing I'll mention is, is we've been doing it for a really long time. So I mentioned our video game design program, which is founded in computer science. We started that program 12 years ago. We were one of six schools, six major universities to have a program. And we invested in that early and sort of built it from the ground up bringing in some of the best talent around faculty researchers and educators, as well as faculty practitioners who could help prepare our students for the next phase of their life. And I think that's, that's a real differentiating factor, Daniel. Awesome, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Any other questions that I can answer? Okay, Joshua, it looks like we don't have any more questions. That's great, sure appreciate the, uh, the opportunity. And if I can be of any more help or assistance, so happy, so happy to do it. Okay, thank you so much, Joshua. Bye -bye. It was great, we enjoyed it a lot. Eh, estamos aquí para ustedes, para hacerlos crecer profesionalmente. Estamos interesados en el éxito de todos los miembros del GR Club, de los estudiantes directamente, de los colegios que pertenecen al GR Club. Queremos conocer un poco más sobre sus intereses, qué quieren aprender, qué temas les interesan. Y así podemos hacer más seminarios que sean, obviamente, pues del interés de ustedes. Estamos ya coordinando otros seminarios que estoy segura que les van a encantar en el área de business, seminarios en español sobre el currículum, cómo mejorar tu currículum. Hay quienes piensan que porque todavía no están buscando un empleo, el currículum no es importante, pues el currículum es muy importante desde ahora. Aquí hubo una pregunta que hicieron en cuanto a los ensayos que se envían a las universidades. En GR Academic tenemos relación desde hace muchísimos años con muchas universidades y uno de los excelentes beneficios que tenemos es que muchas de las universidades que representamos no exigen un ensayo 
a, los, a nuestros estudiantes. Entonces, y adicional a eso, podemos garantizar becas parciales. Entonces, no es necesario el ensayo en algunas de las universidades que representamos, es un plus, también en algunas de las universidades que representamos no es necesario el TOEFL, pueden presentar un examen de guerra académica, porque el TOEFL les, les crea un poco de miedo a los estudiantes. Entonces, ya el saber que no es el TOEFL, el estudiante está más relajado, sale mucho mejor y puede tener, obviamente, un mejor resultado. Entonces, hay muchísimos beneficios que tiene GR Academic y el GR Club. Otro de los beneficios que tiene el GR Club es que estamos ofreciendo gratis a todos los miembros del GR Club un mes de clases de inglés gratis online. Si estás interesado, por favor, contáctanos si quieres recibir ese mes de clases online gratuito, contáctanos por Instagram, un mensaje privado, arroba GR Academic, o puedes contactarnos también a nuestro WhatsApp. Ustedes, muchos de ustedes ya tienen un excelente nivel de inglés, si no están interesados en un curso gratis de inglés, pues tenemos dos semanas gratis de curso online de francés y de alemán. Entonces, no dejen de contactarnos porque las sorpresas que tenemos para ustedes y los aportes que tenemos tanto para los estudiantes como para los colegios son bastantes. Entonces, aprovechenlos, síganos en todas las redes para que estén enterados de todo lo nuevo que, que estamos haciendo. Muchísimas gracias por su participación. Sé que algunos han tenido problemas con, con internet, pero de igual forma les agradezco haberse mantenido ahí. Estamos muy contentos con la receptividad que hubo en este primer seminario. Muchas gracias por estar aquí y esperamos todas sus dudas y todos sus comentarios. Esperamos, síganos en todas las redes sociales. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, arroba Academic.